this is Rebecca Smith with Help for Homeschool, and today I want to talk to you about math toys and manipulatives. I did a video last week where we talked a little bit about math curriculum and different terminology and styles of math curriculum. I have another video coming out this coming up Friday where I dive into some specific curriculums that we've used in the past, what's worked for our family, what hasn't worked, why I've used certain things. Hopefully I can shed some light on different ones that you may be considering using for your family. But today I want to talk about math toys. Now, I did not consider myself a mathematical person. In fact, I really struggled with math in school. Elementary through college was not great for me, not good in math. My lowest grade in college was in college algebra, just did not do super great at it. I always thought that I was not mathematically minded. However, I was very good at music theory and I was very good at a lot of practical common everyday math. But when it came to textbook math, I seemed to fail. Honestly, as an adult, I think that I'm really not bad at math. I think the methods of math that was used to teach me were not the best for the way that I learn. So I've done things differently with my own kids. And one of the things that I've done differently and the, one of the things I feel like has really paid off is investing in math, toys, and games. So these are not part of our homeschool curriculum. These are just fun activities and toys and games that I have available for my kids to use. And my very favorite, I'm gonna share with you first. Now, this toy has been used from my kids as babies, like my one-year-old, all the way through my 11-year-old. We'll still play with this. And it is magnetic blocks. Now, if you've never seen magnetic blocks, there's several different kinds. And if you go online, you're gonna find several varieties. Some work with each other and are compatible and some are not, but they're a lot of fun. They're just magnetic. You can make all sorts of different shapes with the magnetic blocks. Um, my kids make everything from towers to weapons to crazy inventions. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. When my eight-year-old was a preschooler, I carried around a box of these everywhere I went with him because he would play with them for hours. Um, they're just great, and honestly, they're really affordable. There are different varieties. I have this kind. Um, I also have these that are solid. They're not compatible. Um, there are other kinds that are just solid, like plates, like see-through plates. Um, I'm gonna post some in the description so you can see them. What I like about these in terms of training kids to think mathematically, besides being a building toy and giving them a lot of opportunity to use their imagination, I feel like it also really helps them think three-dimensionally about shapes. My eight and nine-year-olds are both working on rotational and reflectional symmetry in their math curriculum. My nine-year-old just finished a whole geometry unit where he was doing square feet and um, using a protractor and measuring angles and all that type of thing. And he comes by it so naturally. I'm sure part of it is just his wiring and his makeup, but I also really think it's all of those experience with those three dimensional toys that have kind of wired his brain to understand that in a really wonderful way. I feel like that time with those type of toys really paid off for all of my kids. Now, the second toy, I think I originally did buy this as part of our homeschool curriculum, but my kids have played with them so, so very, very much. And these are pattern blocks. Now, pattern blocks are just standard shapes like this. There's so many different brands. Um, there's even printable ones, I think, that you can print off. But I like the hard plastic ones because they maintain their shape. Um, these came, when I bought these originally, they came with some cards where you could lay the shapes out on the cards and make different shapes, a bird, a train, a car, um, whatever. But honestly, my kids have spent a good bit of time just creating their own shapes, writing their names, making patterns that kind of extend in all directions, um, all sorts of different things. And I really have loved it um, when you talk about patterns I mean, they're pattern blocks, but understanding those different patterns and those sequences, there's just nothing better. And you really can be creative. 
my kids love these and they all play with them and they've played with them for a really long time. So the last category is not one specific product, but it's a category, which is math games. I love math games. They're so much fun. Some are actual physical board games that you can buy and you have to solve riddles and puzzles independently or as a team or maybe you race against the clock. But others are things like Sudoku, which is just independently done. You can even download an app on your phone for that or you know, they have the books like at the dollar store. You can just grab them. My nine year old loves Sudoku. He'll do those for hours. Um, other games like even things like Connect Four, games like that are math games. You're trying to solve a puzzle and you're playing against another person or strategy games like chess or checkers. Those train your brain to think mathematically and to solve problems and to think logically. And learning to think in that way only benefits your kids in the future when they're doing math. Um, and honestly, especially on younger levels, even games like Candyland, where you have to move a certain number of places and you're practicing counting, those have such great mathematical value besides the fact that they're just wonderful games that are fun to play with your kids. Math education takes place not just in your textbook, but it starts with having fun with your kids and giving them opportunities to have fun and think and problem solve on their own. Um, you don't have to invest in a super expensive curriculum. Instead, you can provide some inexpensive options around your house um, to engage them mathematically in their everyday life. Uh, especially, I didn't, this wasn't planned. I wasn't planning on mentioning this one, but cooking, cooking is hugely mathematical. How do I take this recipe that's geared for a family of four and turn it into um, a recipe for a family of seven? What do I need to do mathematically? Let your kids help you double those recipes or cut recipes in half. Let them help you measure, learn what half a cup is or a tablespoon or a teaspoon, learn different measurements. Help, uh, let them help cut things into pieces. Like here's a pan of brownies and we need to cut it into 12 brownies. How do we do that? How can we cut it into 12 pieces? And that means that each piece is 1 12th. You, doing that with your kids, one-on-one, -on -one, everyday stuff is really the foundation that any type of math curriculum is gonna be built on. And if you haven't laid that groundwork through those everyday experiences with your kids, they're gonna struggle when they come to it because they're not gonna be able to connect it to reality and to everyday life. So I hope this helps you and gives you some ideas on um, things that you can do to help train your children to think mathematically. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you missed our other math video, please check it out. I'm gonna post a link um, here on the screen and be on the lookout for the video coming out Friday when we talk about specific math curriculums. Make sure to subscribe so that you are alerted when a new video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and happy homeschooling.